All right, uh, here we go. I'm going to walk you through one of the tunes that I've uh, produced for my band. We call it White Call the Rebel, but they'll be up. I'll put a link in the description. That's what you're supposed to do, innit? So, <coughs> basically, this is a, um, so a bit of a rock tune, and uh, I'll play a bit of a chorus. That is the solo. More solo. Alright, so that's the kind of general idea of the track. Okay, so let's spread it down. This, for this track, I've done something I don't usually do, and I've named all the channels with the, the band members. This is, I wouldn't usually do this because I um, usually mix people I don't know, but in this case it's my band, so I've just gave it the name of the name the person. So at the moment I've got Craig here. Craig's our drummer, a very good drummer. And um, we've got his take here. So let's just have a little mosey that for. So I've split his take actually up into uh, his shells and his overheads. So the overheads being the cymbals uh, and basically the stereo mix of the kit. The shells being close mics to kick, snare, uh, the rack, Tom, the floor Tom, and uh, I've also I've split some things up here for the breakdown. That'll make more sense as we go a bit further on in the video. So let's just quickly look what process I've put on here. So the, uh, the the overall group for Craig has a glue compressor on. The 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 point of this is to uh, well glue the the drums together. Uh, if I have a little listen, let's have a little. Listen on and off, do the old on and off test. Off. On. Off. A bit of a subtle difference, but definitely gluing things more together. You can see this little arrow here, it's showing gain reduction. So basically how much the loudest bits are being brought down by. This little fella here is making it up again. So basically, we we pull the we pull the the volume down the loudest parts, and then we can make it up with this. So essentially, reducing the dynamic range of the audio. That's all I've got on the on the bus. Let's move through. So we have here we have a so this is a kit drum. Let's saw this for a little bit. Okay, so this one here we've got an EQ and we've got a compressor. So looking at the EQ here, we can see I'm I'm trying to just reduce the very sub frequencies here. Add a little bit of punch, a little bit of hundred hertz, just to kind of kick through in the mix, and then t try and take it in the mod. And that's all I'm really doing with the compressor on here. Let's have a listen to it with on and off. Oops. So that's the EQ off. On. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of low end here. What what's this little fell? So this is my compressor. I've got a compressor on here. Uh, you can see here I've got my attack line, my attack time, quite long. This is basically trying to allow the transient to pass through before the compressor kicks in. So it's a, trying to add punch to the drum as opposed to control transient. So. Uh, let's have a little listen with the on and off. Off. On. You see, just it's a, it's quite subtle, but I mean, a lot of production is subtle. It's all about the subtle changes that that make the the big picture a little bit better. Okay, right, moving through. On this particular track, 
as you can see by the, the name, I uh, actually made a bit of a mistake. I processed the snare to death and I forgot to do a save as and now I've got my snare down as a stereo file here. Initially it was the snare top and bottom mixed together so there were two channels but in this example here I've only got the kind of what I did to it so a little bit of a nightmare for demonstration purposes but it's a good technique to kind of have in the bag once you've got something sounding good you know bounce it bounce it bring it back in here and saves memory obviously on this snare here I've got three plugins on the original snare channels that would have been multiple so let's have a listen to the snare right? so this is this is the snare top and bottom with processing Not sit without. Yeah. It's a quite a tinny, tinny sounding snare, but it works in the track, so, you know, what's this all about? Obviously, the, the, the frequency range of an instrument, you know, on its own can sound great, but in a track, it needs to fit in with what everything else is going on. Alright, so down here we've got our toms. So what I've done here, I've got my rat toms and my flow tom. For the, the fills here, and then for the breakdown here. The reason I've split these up, basically, uh, uh, these first ones are fills. So they're kind of, so just a little listen to them on their own. So they're kind of, just kind of filling the sound out, but whereas here, it's a, it's a very tom groove. So you can see the difference there is basically that the, the toms take a lead role at this point in the track. So I've given them their own channels and uh, basically it boosted the volume because they're a massive part of the track at this point. But I've also kind of, let's see on here, these ones, they've basically got no, oh, I should probably go back and fix that. They've not got a lot of uh, EQ on them or any any process and it was basically just how the microphone sounded in the room but at this point I've I've used, I've used, I've used EQ and this little plug in here called uh, this is CLA drums by uh, Waves is one of the CLA packages I've actually I've just used a pl uh, preset here just sounds good so why not use it so basically the whole point here is I suppose because the drum that the toms were a big part of the song at this point I've spent more time on them I gave them a own channel I've gave them some different processing but the rest of the time where the toms were essentially just you know doing fills have uh, I've just yeah I got the mics in the right place in the room and try to get a good sound. Okay, so moving down. Overheads. So I process them differently from the rest of the drum kit in this example. Sometimes I put the, the, the overheads in the drum group. Sometimes I don't. This is one of those times. Uh, why? Let's figure it out. Okay, I think I'll figure out the reason I did it this way. Basically, there's a lot of uh, processing on the overhead. Well, not processing, but 
automation on the overheads going on. And I've been cheeky and I've, this is automation here, I've popped them in the own group. The reason being, they were probably a little bit too loud. So what I've done is I've added this utility plug in here and I've turned the volume down by 3.89 dB. And that's just a way of getting around uh, kind of not wanting to lose this automation but uh, pulling the overheads down in volume so that's I think that's why I've, I've done that alright mate, hello Craig I'll uh, reply to that fella in a minute the old team's popping up, love it ok moving uh, down then, so we've got overheads Jake's so Jake's a bass player, cracking, cracking bass player. Uh, let's have a little deeks of what I've done here. So up uh, on this one, what I've done, I have to make this bit in the middle sound special. I've duplicated this take, and the main thing that's different between the takes is the EQ. So you can see in this one, I've just got the bassy bit. In this one, I've got this high end. The reason for this is. On this kind of on this take, actually, I bounce it down so I don't have a lot of the original processing on. I, I put a ridiculous amount of distortion on it. Uh, the distortion obviously ha adds high end the content. As I moved forward, I realised that it was just dominating the bottom end that makes dominating the mid range that makes. So what I did was I kind of duplicated it and. Uh, cut off the mid range. I'm going to demonstrate it now. So, so that, so that. So here it is, kind of. So that's it, kind of with the top end cut off. But then I've got this breakdown part where I. Uh, so you can hear there the high end coming in. So basically, the, the whole bass. So the whole that's kind of the whole thing put together. Oops. The old teams. Ah, teams. I'll get back to you, buddy. Honestly, I will get back to you. If you send me messages, I will get back to you. But uh, what you got? Uh, maybe try and remember. Uh, I'm obviously. I'm trying to mark. Uh, I'm trying to make content, uh, I'm trying to be in team meetings and do all sorts of things, so if you do send me a message, please uh, be patient, I will get back to you, I'm reading them all, I'm, I'm trying my hardest to respond, okie doke, I'll finish off this meeting and I'll get back to you guys, uh, okay, so that was the base, so the, the big thing on the base I suppose is splitting the frequency band so I've got low frequencies most of the time and then when I get that big breakdown I'm adding in this extra bit that has the top end frequencies okay we're moving down from Jake legend for a player we've got a Reese stand up guy that, that won all the, the lasses love great player as well good friend this is Reese. So what we got going here then we have the EQ taking off the low end, making room for the, 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 the kick drum and the bass. And we also have the CLA drum. I saw a CLA guitar plugging on there. Basically just a uh, it's a conglomerate really of uh, effects so we have reamplify on here so if you, if you if you pull your guitar straight into the computer you can turn an amp on and this point I've got turned off the reason being that we actually recorded the guitar through a Vox AC40 which is a bloody lovely amp uh, and we've got the tone really nice in the studio but it just needed a little bit of a uh, boosting on the treble, a little bit of compression. So instead of kind of putting an EQ on there, I, I whacked this bad boy on because 
I know it works really well. Quite a nice sound thing. So that's why I've done that. Uh, and obviously the EQ to get make room for the bass and the mix. Uh, at this point in the track, I've copied it over. The reason for it being is I, I've added this effect on. And also, I, I, I think I've, by looked at things here, yeah, I have. I've added some automation to the EQ, so let's just kind of have a listen to this on its own, see what happens. With the Majawat off, put it on. EQ off, EQ on. Actually, looking at the EQ automation, it's not really affecting the sound here. You can see I've kind of pulled it down if you look at these points. See that I've uh, yeah I've kind of EQ'd it, I've automated it before these points. I could have switched channels, I could have kind of re EQ'd it, but at this point I've just automated it. Uh, okay, so here we have. Blah, blah, blah. This is Reese's guitar and the solo. See this is actually this is looking back. This is kind of where I've. What has happened here is I have added these effects for the, for this, section that the solo. I've left them on this one by mistake. I think probably. But well, on here they're really working. So we can see that, uh, the EQ automation here is uh, I've got a bit of a sweep coming in, so it's coming all the way off. Then watching here we can see it sweeping in. And you can really hear this kind of wah wah thing working here as well. God, I'm peeking coming out there. Rookie mistake. Never mind, I think I've got my volume automated here, so it's fine. Okay, moving on. Still in Reese's guitar tracks here. So these are some extra guitars that's popped on. So on here we've got the CLA guitars having a little bit of reverb. We need a little bit more spacious and other guitar sounds. The EQ8 just basically putting it in its place in the mix. It's a it's a rhythm instrument. It should be in the middle of the mix. We don't need much high end on there. We've got lots of that with the hi hats and the lead guitars. So quite a brutal EQ, but it's working. And then we have this, it's a CLA 76, it's a software version of the 1176 compressor that's very, very, very popular. And this is a Waves version, it's nice. Let's put that on the mix just to hear it. Here, so on the left hand side of the mix as well, so we all right. Ne next bit is me. Hey, so I play keys in the band, and I'm basically only in the band because I produce. I'm not gonna lie to you, I suck at keys, but uh, let's have a listen to my keys. All right, so basically the keyboard I'm using on here is uh, it's from the college, it's from the MX-49s that you can get out of stores. Uh, and I'm just using a kind of pad sound on there. EQ-wise, I've got I've got kind of very similar to the rhythm of the guitar because it's the same frequency range. Uh, I've got my um, EQ-8 on there, just kind of letting the mids through. Then on here, I've got Uh, 
and for audio effects rack that the purpose of this is basically to give me two two mixes of the sound so I've got one mix of the sound with an overdrive on it and one clean the reason I done this was basically I couldn't hear my, my uh, keyboard in the mix very well because there's so much other stuff going on in the mid range so I just started it to uh, to the, I'll, I'll give you an example So that's it. Just put, just pop it back in the mix there for a minute and do the same thing. So with it off. So Hear that? It's just. It's making it cut through a bit in the mix more and uh, kind of pushing it, not above, but in line with the rhythm guitar. Okay, so next thing, we've got the Rhodes. So in the, in the college, we've got, a, we've got a Rhodes piano. It's a bit broken, but it's pretty cool. So uh, I was bored waiting for the guys turning up and uh, I set it up, basically, and just thought I'd have a little twinkle on it. This bit actually here, I, I can't take credit for because Sean, the singer, came in the studio and played this. And it was pretty freaking good, so. And the mix there quickly. Sorry, audio problems. Just a subtle little thing, but I think it makes a lot of difference. Let's try this bit here. That I play, I played this bit. Or is it the other way around? Did Sean play that bit and I played that? I don't know. Sean played some of it. All I'm saying is I'm not taking full credit. Uh, so. So it just adds a little bit kind of high end to the mix. Also on, well not so much high mid, just a bit more pokey mid. I've got a compressor on here, it's quite a high ratio, very fast attack. I want the compressor to kick in straight away, uh, just to kind of boost it in the mix. Uh, also I've got this little plugin on here called the King's Microphone from Waves. I like this, program, uh, this plugin for adding a little bit grit. Not gonna lie, yet. I've spent a lot of time with this plugin, and basically, you've got this kind of little menu patch you can hit here. Th that King George number two is the one. Being a few lads from New used to talk about this, and it was just kind of like that the, the bounce was basically number George, George the sixth, number two, whack it on. Before lo fi was cool, that's what we were doing. All right, moving down there, so that's me out of the way. We've got Steve Mix. So Steve's the lead guitarist, uh, very good lead guitarist indeed. Nice guy as well. All the guys in the band are nice. I miss those guys. I miss going to band practice. I properly miss band practice. So you can see with Steve's, I've got a lot more channels for him than pretty much everyone else. Really, the reason for it being a kind of with lead guitars I like to kind of change the tone make little differences and automation is one way of doing it but it can be a little bit clumbersome you know you can make mistakes uh, or you know like I did with the hi-hats before that the cymbals you know you can you can get them sounding right on their own but then in the mix it sounds wrong uh, or too loud too quiet so generally when I'm doing lead guitar synths and stuff, I like to make lots of copies so I can process each individual bit easily. The main thing though, what you're going to see on your ear is most good, obviously, it's not, sorry, it's not obvious, um, lots of EQ and compression. And you can see just as I'm going through the takes, the EQ is kind of changing a lot. 
and that's the main thing that's kind of making the, the, the change as we go through the track or the, you know the transition the uh, what's a better way of saying it it's basically making the guitar uh, evolve as we, we go through the take so there's that yeah. and then on here this particular track is this a solo I bet it's a solo Oh. Just realised I've got that auto filter on for absolutely no reason. Yeah, oh, that's one of the good things about these kind of walk reveals. Actually, I'm enjoying is finding stupid things I've done my mixes. All right, so we're going going through here. We've got, we've got two. So why have I done that? I've just realised I've got one, probably a bounce sound of that, and I've, I've basically panned it. Yeah. So I think what's happened here, yeah, I've pa I bounced this track down to audio, freezed it, and then I've popped it over on the right hand side, just a little bit further out, just to kind of add more stead rule width to that right hand side. Uh, so you've got this one at fourteen right, and that one at forty one right. That's kind of why I've done that. See in this one here we've got some wild EQ. Actually we have most of it bounce. The reason for that is uh, Steve kept asking me if it could sound like the edge. So I uh, boosted that top end up and put loads of delay on it. So that's kind of Steve's guitar. Basically we we tried to get a good sound in the studio with the right microphones, right guitar, the right amp and because of that, all I've had to really do is uh, EQ and compress, just to even out the volume and get rid of the unwanted frequencies. Cool. All right, moving down. Sean, right, so Sean's a singer. Very, very talented man. Proud to be his friend. Uh, so on Sean's vocal, I've got things spread out a lot, like Steve's guitar, for the very similar reason that, you know, certain sections in the song I want or we want it as a band this voice to change um, so we've um, let's have a little look what we got going on so on the group group vocals there's an EQ compressor this little bad lad as well great by Greg Wales on the old uh, waves plugin beautiful thing I, I'm just going to actually demonstrate that now because it's bloody good Essentially, just reverb and delay, but you know, a doubler of what Christ, it does it, it does a lot of work for you. Uh, right, so that's that one. The other one on here is Nectar. Actually, Nectar is something I want to get more into. It's, uh, Christ, it's got a lot going on. Basically, everything you need to do with vocals is, is in here. The, the de is uh, something I've been worked with a lot in, in this track, actually, because, uh, actually, yeah, I'll really show you that. Sean's vocals in this were extremely essay, should we say. So, as you can spent a bit of time kind of cutting volumes out of the, the kind of bits. I just couldn't get it right though. I think it might be mic choice actually. We used the NT2 which has got nice kind of breaks of feel but uh, yeah it didn't really uh, it didn't really kind of work out well for the essing. So I put that on there and then I've got the, the de-esser on here as well which is uh, essentially you can set the frequency so 2.4k and then like you can you can remove volume there when when it hits above a certain level i'll do a two more another video on that at some point uh, 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 so we, 
we've got on here. This is oh, this is the backing vocals. Put that button in the mix quickly. So you can see there, I'm kind of panning them left to right. So this is all automation there. And there's not a lot, of, oh, there's no other process. I, I think I probably bounced that down. I rec actually, we recorded these in Sean's loft. And uh, I think I might just sent myself them. Crap and stuff. All right, just watch this bad boy here. Just the old side. Why have I done that? I don't know. Maybe they'd be different. Oh yeah, I had a delay on here at one point. Yeah, that's why I've done that. That's basically it, if I'm honest. Oh, reverbs. Uh, sorry, sends. I've got a lot of lot of sends going here. I've got reverb, delay and EQ, more reverb, overdrive, vocals. Probably that and reverb and delay, delay reverb. So basically, yeah, I've got a lot of reverb going on. Uh, I think that's kind of. Tell you what, if you have any questions, uh, send them over. I'll be happy to ask them. Thanks. See you in a bit, man. All right, uh, here we go. I'm gonna walk you through one of the tunes that I've uh, produced for my band. We call White Collar Rebel by the way. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. That's what you're supposed to do in it. So, <coughs> basically, this is a, um, a bit of a rock tune, and uh, I'll play a bit of a chorus. <laughs> 